All right, so let's do a quick review. Unix Vim trivia test three. Let's just go through this real fast. So basics of Unix, basics of Vim, very important if you want to be anybody other than just a pure, you know, Microsoft, you know, person. Um, even Macs use Unix under the hood. It's just the you know best uh, best operating. Uh, it's not really a operating system. Linux is one version, one variant of Unix. I would say there's many. Unix-like operating system, so I just call them all generically Unix. And so you need to know how to use, um, there's something called the POSIX standard POSIX that uh, sort of unifies all the different um, Unix standards together. So if you move from, you know, one OS to another that are all Unix-likes, all these commands are going to be the same. Uh, and there's different shells that have different commands as well, and that doesn't really matter. What you need to know is like how to copy a file, how to move a file, how to delete a file, how to search for files, things like that. It's very important stuff. So uh, question number one, how do you copy all the files from inside of a directory to your home directory? And so you do so by uh, using the copy command, cp is the copy command, and then the asterisk means all files that match everything. Like it's basically all files if it's without itself. If you type test star, it'll match all files that begin with test. If you type star test, it'll find all files that end with test. The star is the wildcard match character. And so what this line of code here is saying is find all files inside of the Shakespeare directory and copy them to my home directory. The home directory is tilde. The root directory is just front slash by itself. And the current directory is dot. So question number two, how do you delete a folder in your current directory named yeet? It has files in it, so you cannot use armdir. Armdir, I believe, doesn't work if you have files. I never use armdir. I always use arm for everything. So rm-rf, uh, and you can you don't have to have the dot there. I just put the dot there for uh, uh, pedag pedagogical reasons uh, to teach you guys that the current directory is dot. Uh, if you just type rm-rf yeet without the dot slash, it'd be fine as well. Uh, and it, and would be how I would type it normally. Question number three, search for the word yeet in all files in the current directory. So this is an extremely common task that we do in uh, programming, right? Like if, if, uh, if you put me in front of a new code base, and I've, I have no experience with it, but um, I don't know, let's say I get hired by, uh, who is it, Riot or something to do League of Legends. And they're like, we want you to fix a bug in like whatever the Fox girl's name is, Ari or whatever her name is, right? There's a bug in Ari. Is that, am I remembering this right? It's been like a long time since I played League. You guys know what I'm talking about? A-H-R-I? Yes, no? Maybe? I don't know. Whatever. It's a hypothetical. Okay. So let's say there's a bug and they're like, congratulations, you're a new hire. Go fix this bug. And they just, they, here's the directory. It's got 500 source code files in it. Fix the bug. And, and you're, you're like, you're like, you're doing the John Travolta meme, you know, like, uh, where, <laughs> where, <laughs> you know, uh, where is everything? And so there's a command called grep. Grep is, is extremely important because grep allows you to find a keyword across all the files, um, in this case, in the current directory. So all files in the current directory, again, are star, star matches all files. And so we're going to search for the keyword yeet in all files in the current directory, and it will print to the screen every match. Every time uh, the word yeet appears in every single file in the current directory, it'll print it to the screen, which might be too much. You know what I mean? Like it might be too, like just too much information. Like if you've got millions of lines of code, and so there's options you can do to, uh, to, to grep to do things like uh, just print the file name. So it'll give you a list of all the files where the name already appears, and then uh, or you can count how many times the word Ari appears in a file, and you're like, oh, like that one has 60. So now let me just greep yeet in, in Ari.cc, and oh, look, there's all the times the word Ari appears. All right, now the problem is with her, I don't know, crystal heart thing? I don't know. Like I said, it's been ages since I've played League. Um, so, you, so like if, if I had played it, I would know the name of the move. Uh, I'm just going to call it um, crystal heart. I don't know. And so I grep Crystal Heart, and then oh look, there's there's all the places where Crystal Heart appears. Charm, okay, great, makes sense. Uh, so I'll grep Charm inside of re.cc, and it's gonna show me every time the word Charm appears in there. Oh look, there's a function called Launch Charm. Okay, boom, I'm gonna open that up in Vim, 
or VS Code if you're uh, a GUI person. Um, VS Code is fine. It, it has Vim mode. Its Vim mode is not as complete as real Vim, but yeah, it's, it's fine. Um, and then you can jump over by typing front slash charm, go to the function, and start looking through it and start doing your bug fixes. So grep is life. Grep is like when you've been thrown on a lifeboat in the middle of the South Pacific and there's nothing in sight and you're completely lost, you're completely disoriented in a code base. There's 500, 1,000 files. You have no idea where anything is. Grep. And you can start hunting around. Like, if, you got to play the game first. Like, you got to know that, you know, the name of the move is Charm or, you know, you're, you're going to be searching for, like, the wrong things. Um, but when you have, like, a little hook like that, like, I know the name of the ability is Charm. Then you start searching for that. And then you, like, dig your way through the code base. And if, when you get good at it, uh, which is a skill. This is actually a skill to learn how to read code, how to parse code, how to work with large code bases. It's a skill you don't get in college because we just have you guys write code. It's very rare for us to hand you like, here's a million lines of code, fix the bug. Uh, although that'd be fun. I don't know. Maybe we'll do that next week. What do you guys think? <laughs> and then you've got to like hunt around and, and, and find, the, find the mistake. It's a good exercise. Um, it might be fun. Uh, it might be horrible. Uh, my brother-in-law does it uh, in, in Russian. So he does, he does these exercises where he hands people broken code. There's a bug, and all of the code bases are written in Russian. And so all the variables are Russian, all the function names are Russian, so you have no, the comments are all in Russian, you have no idea what any of this stuff does. You know, and you've got to hunt around somehow and find the mistake and fix it. It's all these files and stuff like that. So it's, it's nuts. Okay, it's a fun exercise. Grep is life. All right. Next one up, repeat the last command. This is something I do all the time in Unix. Um, so exclamation mark, exclamation mark, runs the very last command that you ran. And uh, what I oftentimes will do is I'll do something like sudo space, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, that runs the last command as root. So if I try doing something that requires root access, like copying a file from a student's directory, I can't do so normally. I don't have permissions on any of your directories, but root does, root is the super user, right? So if I try like changing the permissions or ownership on a file or something like that, oftentimes I'll get a permission denied because I'm my under normal circumstances, I'm just any other user on the system, but I can escalate to root. So I type sudo space, bing, 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 exclamation mark character, bing, bing, hit it, then it runs the last command as root without me having to retype everything again. Uh, question number five, show all files in the current directory, including hitting files. Now, uh, on our server, there's an alias called LA, and which doesn't stand for Los Angeles. It just is um, alias LA, uh, ls-a, a shows the invisible files. So if you type ls-a, it shows you all of these invisible files in here. Invisible files in Unix start with a dot. Okay. So arrow key is better. <laughs> You could, but then you have to like up arrow and then hit home and stuff like that. So, uh, so normally any file with a dot at the beginning is hidden. ls-a will show you all of the uh, all of the files, including the visible ones. And then ls-al shows you all the files with permissions. So long the dash l here, that dash l shows you the permissions on the files. Who's got read access, who's got write access, they're in groups of three, read, write, x, uh, rwx, for the owner, then for the group, then for all other people on the system. So it's rwx, rwx, rwx. So that means I have read, write, execute, my group has read, write, execute, and uh, other people on the server have read and execute, but not write, which is good, because that's my uh, SSH directory where I have my private uh, bubble keys. So. Students be able to change my if my uh, public keys would allow them to log in as me without a password, which would be uh, a security issue. Right. So that is that. So that's ls a, and like I said, I've got an alias on our server. It's not a standard Unix command. Okay. So then, how do you quit without saving? Colon q exclamation mark. There's a series of commands like this. Uh, colon q exclamation mark without saving. Uh, there is write and quit. 
which is the same as Shift CZ. There is just W to save. So if you just like want to save and not, you know, quit, dash W saves a file. Um, so the exclamation mark means like override, basically. So quit. Like if you if you if you modify a file, uh, you modify a file, and then you hit quit colon Q, it says no. It, it prevents you from uh, losing your 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 work. So you have to hit Q exclamation mark to get out of there without a save. How do you reformat the entire entire file? It's a couple different ways of doing this. Um, hello, hello, yeah, hello world with no e. Hello, hello world. Um, so GG equals capital G is kind of like the go-to, I guess. So if I break the formatting here, let me break the formatting. No, let's not do that. So there's double right arrow, right shifts, double right arrow, double right arrow, double left arrow, double left arrow. Okay, let's say the formatting is just all screwed up, right? GG equals capital G fixes the entire file. Now, if you want to just fix like uh, one function, which is pretty common, right? Like if I copy and paste some code from cppreference.com, which is perfectly allowed, like I said in this class, you can you can copy from cppreference.com. Uh, a lot of times the formatting comes in all broken and stuff like that. So what I'll do is I'll go to like one of the, um, the curly boys here. And I'll type equal sign. Equal sign is the reformat command. It's pretty cool. So I'll type equal sign, shift five, and then it reformats the whole function. So shift five, also known as percentage sign, jumps to the matching curly boy. Okay, very useful also. So if you're just scrolling around, you're like, where does this connect to you? Shift five. You know, when you've got like a big piece of code, shift five is life. Because like if your curly brackets are messed up, uh, your, your code is going to be wrong, like really wrong, you know, because you have a for loop that's not a for loop, it's an if statement, you know, it's really bad. And so checking to see which, because students often have like, oh, it says missing curly bracket. Oh, I'll just put one in there somewhere. And then, you know, oh Lord, <laughs> who knows, who knows what will happen at that point. And so, uh, you know, a lot of times you look at it and like, all right, okay, lines up. But um, when you have a lot of code, you got a lot of nested if statements and for loops and things like that. It's very useful to hit shift five. Also just reformatting in general. Like if you forget something, like if you say if uh, true else see out by you know, byte, sure, why not? If you do this, it's like, oh, you're missing us. Uh, all right, we'll just, we'll just throw a close bracket there. Everything's fine now. There's no problems at all. Now, <laughs> If you reformat the code, watch what happens. The reformat will actually reveal the problem in your code. You see how the else is over here when the else should be here? Like, you know what I mean? Like on the same vertical alignment. So reformatting will actually find bugs um, like this. Like when you, like I left off the, the matching close brace here. Um, and so if you reformat, then you're like, oh yeah, no, that's not right. You know? You should never have an else with no no if above it. You know what I mean? Like the if should be vertically aligned with the else. So that tells me ah that's where I'm missing my my close boy right there. You know, G equals capital G. Everything looks fine except oh look at that I've got an extra flat indentation here, right? And then shift five between them, and you know you check every check all the braces, make sure they all line up properly. Very useful stuff. Shift five. All right, uh, reformat, very useful too. Equal sign, very useful. So equal sign with any motion command will reformat those those lines. So equal sign shift five reformats an entire function. If you're at one curly brace equals shift five, reformats just that function. GG equals capital G reformats the entire file, which moves the cursor to the top of the screen. And yeah, a lot of times you just want to reformat just a little, little bit. All right, how do you search for the word yeet in your file? Front slash. So you might notice that I kind of put you know, similar similar stuff in Unix. This is searching across all files in Unix. This is in Vim, okay? So that searches inside of our file for the word yeet. So if I want to search for the word cout, it's front slash cout. And you'll see that it highlights the word cout. I can hit N to go next, 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 next. Shift N goes backwards, which looks exactly the same as next because there's two of them, but let's make some more. Yeah. So, Lowercase n, lowercase n, lowercase n, go to the next, go to the next, go to the next. 
Shift in, shift in, shift in, shift in. Go to the previous, go to the previous, go to the previous. If you put your cursor at the top of the file, you just press G equals G. Sure. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. So if I'm up here, equal sign shift G. You can combine basically any command in Vim with any motion command. And so, for example, right arrow uh, five right arrow will right indent five lines. But I could also combine that with like um, right arrow shift five. And so that that motion command tells Vim what area the command's gonna apply to. So if I wanted to delete just this branch here, I can say D shift five, and then it eats everything in the if statement. You guys see that? So I hit D, D's delete, and then I give shift five. And so it munches everything between the curly brackets like that, right? Oh, maybe hit D again, D shift five, eats everything between it. It's pretty cool. So uh, when you, when you uh, get good at Vim, like, it, and this is a reason why, you know, I tell, like, I, I tell you Vim's important to know. It's not just, you know, so I can beat you up and, and test your trivia knowledge on this kind of stuff. Like, there are legitimately professional programmers that will go out there and be like, okay, well, I'm going to go and delete one word out of each one of these things here. It's 100,000 lines of code, and I'm going to sit here all day long and repeat the same command over, and I'm like, oh, oh don't do that. You know, like... Just watching people like trying to code in Visual Studio without Vim mode on, it's it's just like watching Artax drown. You know the this might be too old for you guys. It's like the horse. It's like drowning in quicksand and stuff like that. Yeah, it that's what it feels like when I watch people um, like coding in Visual Studio. <laughs> it's just like what. Well, why are you doing this to yourself? Why are you tormenting yourself? Well, it seems like Vim's hard to learn. Well, it kind of is, but, you know, each one of those commands is pretty useful, you know? What if you had 50 Hello Worlds, you want them to say goodbye instead? Yeah. So, uh, we can do a macro for it, but I don't think we need a macro. There's there's a Vim command where you can search and replace things. Um, I never use it because I want to look at each word and, and make sure I want to change it. So what I do, so I'll do a front slash hello, and then I do an S. Uh, I can do an S5, which substitutes five letters, or a CW, which stands for change a word. Uh, either one will work. They do exactly the same thing. Uh, CW doesn't require counting, though. So do CW, and I'll type in uh, goodbye. Goodbye. And hit escape. Now, remember... Vim records the last command you did. So I don't need to actually go to the effort of making a full-on macro. I can just hit N to go to the next and hit dot. And N to go to the next and dot. And so I'll actually do that to go through a file unless there's like, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of these things. Uh, in which case I will use the global search and replace. Uh, but I, in general, I like to actually look at every substitution I make because I've been burned too many times by, you know, substitute, like, you know, I might up have up here like hashtag include hello and then that turns into hashtag include goodbye and you're just like wait what why what why is my code not compiling now you know what i mean so actually when i reformat my when i refactor my code uh, i actually look like to look at every every change um that is an area where like having like visual studio id is actually really nice it's got tools for code refactoring so you do things like change the name of a member variable and then every place that refers to that member variable will have the name changed. That's really nice. And I don't know how to do that in Vim. Um, there's undoubtedly a way. I just, I don't know how to do it. Um, I don't, you know, do those kinds of refactorings that often. Uh, add a variable name to rename. Yeah, so doing that is is how I would do it. You know, it's, how many times do you use the variable? You know, 20 or 30 times. I would not do it by hand. Yeah. No. I'd search. I'd, front slash search, and then do a CW to change the word, then dot to repeat. Okay, uh, next up, how do you repeat the last command? Dot. <laughs> right, whatever you do, whatever you do, it'll repeat the last command. So if you double right arrow to indent, dot, 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 dot. Okay, double equals to reformat. Um, if you want to delete, 
D two W delete two words. Dot 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 dot. Okay, easy. Like I said, you know, watching people trying to trying to code and doing any of these time consuming, repetitive tasks. Like in, it's like it's like this too. Like they'll go to the end of the word. Too many. I'm just dying. Like I'm, I'm literally dying on the inside watching that. You know. Hmm. Please no. Please no. Please. <laughs> Okay, uh, last command, it just automatically, it's an automatic macro. So if you get, when you get good at Vim, you got lots of commands under your belt. You can do very powerful things in one, one command, like change word. It's both a delete and an insert and a typing uh, all in one command, right? And so if I think dot, you can replace a word with another word uh, with just one push of a keystroke. How do you record a macro? Q. So Q is the macro command. We talked about this last time. You get Q and you choose a key to bind it to, like Q, H, whatever. And then you're recording the H macro. And then whatever keystrokes you type in, it'll remember until you hit Q again, stops recording, it's now saved as H. And you can replay it by typing at H. So if you type QH to record, macro H, and then Q to stop recording, and you do keystrokes in here. You stop recording, and then you can replay it by typing at H or uh, at at replay. Okay. And so, for things that you can't quite fit into a dot macro, you know, like so actually sometimes macros can get quite complicated. But uh, if you can't fit it into a dot, a single command, uh, then uh, you record a full on series of commands like that. And then you, and it's permanent. Like you can just use those over and over again. So whatever repetitive tasks, uh, whatever repetitive tasks you do all the time in your job, you can automate it and save, save time in your life. The more Unix, the more Vim you know, the better off you'll be. Trust me, it's, it's, it's a night and day difference watching like, when I like my first boss was a Vim master, but like I've hung out with other Vim masters over the years as well. And uh, you know, when I was first coding, I was like, I don't know anything, you know, I know I to go into insert mode or whatever. You know, so everything he did was magic. But like, you know, even after I got good at Vim, like when you hang out with another Vim user, their workflow is different from yours. You're just like, what did you just do? Uh, stop, stop, stop. How did you do that? Well, I use the S command. I'm like, the S command? That's pointless. You know, why would you ever use the S command? It, it deletes a letter and puts you in insert mode. It's point. Yeah, but if you type 5S, it deletes five letters and puts you in insert mode, and then you can use dot to repeat it. I'm like... And then I started doing it. <laughs> right? That, that got added to my workflow because I didn't see the point of it. It's like it's X and I together. What's the point? Well, if you do 5S, it deletes five letters and puts you into insert mode and then records that and then you hit it dot and it'll repeat the five X's and so. Vim is greater than Visual Studio. Yeah. yeah. And again, you know, VS Code's fine. You know, not, not a hater or anything like that. VS, VS Code's fine. But with Vim mode, 